again, my name is Monica and I'm from geeksagogo.com and today we are with the amazing voice actor Brian Vika. Hello, hello. <laughs> Brian has a long list of stuff under his belt. Um, some of my favorites are um, you you're apparently part of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. <laughs> yeah, poor Shigechi. <laughs> Shigechi. He like, had a terrible death. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. Sailor yeah. Moon, apparently. Yeah, um, Alan, Alan, yeah. or Ale. Yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, I can, I can definitely tell. Like, are there, you have so many fans out here in the convention oh. today at Anime Magic, and we are so happy to have you. Thank you. Um, t he has a lot of like really cool projects that we're going to be talking about today as well. But today, since we're in Anime Magic, tell us a little bit about the panels and seminars that you conducted today. So uh, a panel is called Behind the Voice. So I basically talk about how I became a voiceover actor, uh, the, the theater that I did that got me in uh, to the business, uh, being a musician, things like that. But mainly the panel is really fun because it tells all the terrible stories about how you try to succeed as a voiceover actor and when you're not working, the things you have to do like being in a Barney the Dinosaur costume. Or, what? <laughs> oh yes, I, did, I was Barney the Dinosaur on tour for like 20 years. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the costume's just like a torture device. It's just <laughs> terrible. Um, so it's a very, very fun, fun panel, and also a little bit of uh, Q&A and telling people if they're interested in, in becoming a voice actor, how to go about doing it, even though there are no rules, there is no one way to do it. It's just the way that it happened to me. Huh, that's amazing. Yeah. So how did you get into voice acting in the first place? I was doing a play. Um, I was working at Universal Studios in the Beetlejuice's Rockin' Graveyard Review, singing and oh dancing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Singing and dancing for a job five days a week. And um, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who is a great voiceover actor uh, in her own right, we were both on the show. She was Bride of Frankenstein. I was Phantom of the Opera. And I was doing a, a one-man show where I played 38 different people. No costumes, <laughs> no wigs, nothing, just the voice. She came and saw the show, and she said, I think you might be right for this new show that I'm casting. Come on in. So I went in and auditioned and got the role of Takato in Digimon Tamers yes. 20 years ago. And literally that one show catapulted my entire career. Just who you meet. And, you know, of course I did Digimon uh, Season 4 as Pokemon, Pokemon. And <laughs> <laughs> Season 5 as Agumon 2.0. And it got me into this world of anime that I was never, not not a fan of, I just wasn't aware of it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm 100 years old, so me growing Stop. up, oh my, God. <laughs> my, my anime was a Speed Racer. You know what I mean? Yes. And I didn't watch oh. that much of it. You know, I was, I was your typical Warner Brothers cartoon guy. Mm -hmm. So anime was really new to me. Dubbing was new to me. So literally in Digimon Tamers, I was learning how to do it on the job. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and such a, a great show. Well written, well translated, uh, brilliant direction. So I had a, a really good project to work with. Yeah. Um, but man, I was I was nervous half the time. You know what I mean? Trying to figure it all out. Because you didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And also, we were doing a show about digital monsters, but we were an analog show because when we were started, we were still recording on tape. So you had to get <laughs> the recording right. So... That was a little scary. Then we went to digital in the middle of the season, and that gave me a little bit more time to kind of like figure it out. Because then the engineers were freaking out. They didn't know how to do it. So they were working, you know, through the whole audio session, and I had a chance to like figure out what Takata was about and how to dub and how to match sync. And it was so much fun. So much fun. And now that's my that career. That sounds like a lot of work. A lot of work. It's always a lot of work. It always is. And some shows are harder than others, obviously. Yeah. Um, but Takata was easy and. Is he coming back? You know, 20 year anniversary. There's a bunch of rumbling and buzz oh. and all that stuff. I don't know anything. Oh, I'll, are you sure? I, I don't know anything. <laughs> no, please. I will be the last. The voice actors are the last people to know. They call you up and they say, you got to be in the studio tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, but I really, it'd be great if he came back. Yeah, that would be know? amazing. Yeah. Does the pen, has the pandemic changed the way how you work in voice acting? It has. It has for a lot of people. Less for me because my uh, apartment in Los Angeles has terrible internet. And so oh I don't get internet that's fast enough to dub from home. Oh my gosh. So the whole pandemic, I mean, for a while I didn't work at all. But then when I did start working, I had to go into the studio. So with safety protocols and SAG and, and all that stuff, ma making the rules. So 
it didn't really change it much for me except that there wasn't a whole lot of work that I was accessible to. Um, a lot of jobs still are recording from home only, and I just I don't have that set up yet. So yeah, and it's really hard. Uh, it is hard, and the then, difference is so so like you can tell the difference between a studio recorded and a home recorded. Yeah, and the engineers I don't think they like it very much either because it's so much easier when the actor comes into the studio. They have to do less. We have to do less because when we're working at home, we're being our own engineers. Yeah. Oh so, my gosh. Right. Yeah. And I'm you know. It's not going to sound good if I'm recording it, so <laughs> just so you know. Uh, but work has started to pick up. Conventions have started to pick up. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I'm not <laughs> doing voiceovers, I'm now doing TikTok. So <laughs> yes. my life is over. Tell us I'm about this tic- TikTok it's that so I am s- still trying to learn. <laughs> do, well, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, don't do it, but do it. Um, I'm obsessed with it. I post every day, and I hate it so much. Um, my TikTok thing is uh, Monokuma Brian B. Okay, and Monokuma Brian B. Monokuma nice. Brian B. Um, it's very weird. It's a. It's. I've created this like sitcom world where Takato and Agumon and Monokuma and Octagawa all live together with me in a in a apartment, like a '90s sitcom. And we have these weird episodes with laugh tracks, and there's musical <laughs> numbers, and it's really, really fun. So anime fans, uh, fans will love it. Fans of old TV shows will love it. It's really stupid. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm having a great time. I feel like you really take on the voice acting um, like uh, profession so much. Do you ever like prefer theater acting or voiceover like, more than... It's, the other, it's funny. It's a great question. I typically like whatever it is I'm not doing. <laughs> but it's a great thing because it kind of it, it always like it moves you to to want more and to yeah. strive for more, to strive for different. But um, I'm doing a lot of voiceover right now, so I would love to do some theater, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm actually I got a movie audition while I'm here at Anime Magic. Oh so, my gosh! So tomorrow morning in my hotel room, I have to do um, I have to find some good lighting. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but because um, I didn't bring my right lights, here. <laughs> right? Uh, so I have to audition for this for this feature film, whatever. But um, theater's great. I did that a lot before um, voiceover. I did the national tour of Les Misérables. Um, yes. So I was very much into music and all that stuff, but. I kind of like to do it all, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but voiceover's been 20 years of that now, so it's, wow. been re- it's been really good to me, for sure. I, I love that you mentioned Les Mis. Um, I'm from the Philippines, so Leia Salongo's part of Yeah, um, well, I've worked with Leia before. Oh, my gosh. She's amazing. She is my hero. No, she's, she's brilliant. She just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. Completely growing into her voice and her adulthood and everything. But, um, yeah, Miss Saigon and Les Mis, and uh, she's... She's, she's just great. incredible. She is. We are. We are so proud of her back home yes. in the Philippines. She's just absolutely ridiculously talented. She's done a lot of voice work too. She's yeah. a great voice voiceover mm-hmm. actor for Disney sure. Disney and yeah. all oh, that. Disney loves her. Yeah. Let's talk about your um, your mini series. Yes, my web yes. series. Yes. So mm-hmm. I I made a web series a couple years ago, and um, I shot it like a TV show. We did. Uh, 30-day shoot, 100 people, cast and crew. I wrote the thing, I produced it, I starred in it, um, and it's called Acting Dead, and it's about this hyper-realized world in L.A. where everything is about zombies, because it's kind of how things were going with The Walking Dead and all that stuff. Um, but it's shot like a comedy, so it's Shaun of the Dead meets The Office. Oh my gosh, this is it's amazing. It's so much fun. <laughs> and around the time that we released it, uh, the Television Academy that produces the Emmys opened up their categories to short form content, which is web series, etc. So we submitted a bunch of uh, categories for the Emmys. An actress in my show, Patrika Darbo, who if you IMDB here, she's been in everything, she got nominated and consequently won. She got Best wow. Actress in a Short Form Comedy, and uh, as a producer, I got an Emmy as well, so I have an Emmy sitting on my TV Yay! at home. It's very exciting. <laughs> I figure, you know, maybe when I drive for Uber, I can put it in the front seat. I don't know. But uh, put the seat belt on. Yeah, it's got to humble you. <laughs> um, but it's really exciting. I got to take my mom to the Emmys, wow. which was exciting in and of itself. But the fact that we won that night was really cool. And Ryan Seacrest gave her the award. And I was sitting next to RuPaul and Michelle Visage. And like, it was amazing. Wow. Completely different world. And um, so we're trying to get a season two going. If you want to watch it, it's actingdead.com. Actingdead.com. It's very funny. It's just a weird, weird show. 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we're all about the zombies and we're all about the weird shows. So good. So uh, you weren't expecting all this like stuff to happen. No, not at all. I just wanted to film something and create something. As like we get fun. older as actors, we like we get into writing and producing and all that stuff. And I thought, well, let's let's do something really really cool and weird. And then just this whole world opened up to us, which was really, really fun. Very cool. Really fun, yeah. Are are we going to see more of this stuff from you in the future? I certainly hope so. It's it's a difficult road to hoe in Los Angeles, getting in as a producer or a writer or a director. Um, And even having an Emmy doesn't necessarily help because a lot of people have Emmys. Uh, You know what I mean? It's like, no, you need two. But certainly, yeah, I love producing, I love writing, and um, I really do want to get a second season for uh, for Acting Dead, because there's musical numbers, filming in New York, a bunch of uh, cool ideas that we have. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, for sure. I hope you like it. <laughs> so what have you enjoyed at the convention so far? Like, what are, like, the most memorable things? Chicago you? Ducks. No. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Deep Dish Pizza. Um, this is a great convention. It's, um, I think it's bigger yeah. than even people making the convention thought it was going to be, which is so cool. Yeah. People are so anxious for something to do and, and a place to be and a place to belong and show off their cosplay. Um, I, I mean, I love Chicago, first of all. The people have been really, really nice. The attendees are great. The fans are great. Uh, it's so well produced and organized and we've been treated really well and it's just nice to get out and see people again, yes. even with masks you know, um, and see the great talent that's here and the great fandom and uh, kids that maybe 10 years ago used to be marginalized and and thought of as different or whatever, and now they're like celebrated. And it's just such a good, it's such a good thing that, that anime and cosplay and everything has become, and it's getting stronger and stronger and more popular. And this is, it's really, really a great con. It's a great con. Well, we hope to see you again next year. Oh, I hope so. Are there any big conventions or events that you have up and coming this year? Yes, I will be. So you're all going to travel to London. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to. <laughs> I'm going to uh, Anime League uh, at the end of October in Manchester. And wow. I, I, have, I know I'm so... Well, hopefully, right? Yeah. Knock on Knock glass. on something. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to quarantine for 15 days so we'll see what it, what it, what's happening in october but i certainly going to do that i just came from jersey i just came from iowa and i think i'm going to do indianapolis but i don't necessarily know if that's locked in yet so okay. at this point it's london so see you there <laughs> there you go <laughs> well um brian where can our fans like find you where can everybody like follow you on social media oh yeah so on twitter it's at brian beacock uh, Instagram is at Brian Beacock. TikTok, Monokuma Brian B. And then Facebook is just for my mom and friends from high school that I don't talk to anymore. So don't bother with that one. As it should. As it should be. As it should be for Facebook. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I had so much fun Me talking too. to you. Me too. I really hope you have a great rest of the show. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for... Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.